guys, how's it going? Today I want to talk to you about the easiest way to set up a external hard drive for both Time Machine and um, a separate partition so that you can put other things on it. And so um, if you look over here, here you'll see that there is a drive connected and it is partitioned into two separate, let's just call them containers on the hard drive. Uh, one I'm going to use for Time Machine and the other I'm going to keep for my own file use. And the reason why I'm doing this video is when I first um, got my first Time Machine drive years ago and I set it up, I was told that, oh no, you have to dedicate the whole drive to Time Machine. You can't use it for anything else. And that is actually false. Um, because if you partition it, it will be like two drives in one. If you don't partition it and you just have one partition on the drive and you let Apple format it, and then hook it to Time Machine. Yes, Time Machine will take over the entire drive. Now for me, this Seagate drive was one terabyte and my entire Mac computer was only around 300 gigabyte. And so what happened is over time, it filled up that whole drive and I couldn't use it for anything else. Now it did have numerous backups going back weeks and months, but I found that I didn't really need that. So. What I needed instead was an extra 500 or 300 gig on that drive that I could store videos or audio files or just documents. So this tutorial is going to show you that once you're getting a new hard drive how to partition it so you can have both a, hard, a, a time machine backup and then save part of the drive for your own use. And that way you will not need two separate drives. Okay. So it is not true that Time Machine requires the entire drive. That's basically what we're getting at here. Okay, so let's go into how we're going to do this. And I'm gonna basically go back to ground zero and start as if this was a brand new drive so you guys can see it. So I'm gonna go to Launchpad and in here, depending on your operating system, you're gonna look for Disk Utility. And you can see I've got my main drive up here. It's called HD2, but really it's the internal drive. Uh, the reason it says that is because I had cloned a, another hard drive recently and put a solid state in. Um, so all you really need to know is that this is the internal drive. And so you don't want to be messing with any of this. Um, you don't want to be formatting this. And then the new drive is here. It has been erased, um, even though it shows that part of it's got you know, 600 gig set up for Time Machine and then 400 for my manual backup. But if we look and we and we dig into those partitions, you'll see there's nothing there. See how this one is 599 gigs free right here available. And then this one over here is almost 400 gigs free. And that's because um, I just wiped out the drive and set up these partitions. But I'm gonna walk you through is if you were doing it from the get-go, if you bought your drive new and you're going to do this for the first time, when you plug it in, you would see one, one thing here, okay? One hard drive. It shouldn't have any other partitions underneath it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by erasing this. So I'm going to go in here, erase. You can put a name in here. It doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to just put... Uh, We'll just put Seagate Slim Mac. And then the format here, you want OS Extended Journal and you want this GUID partition map. Okay? And I'm going to erase the drive. So it's going to erase everything on it, including the partitions. Because we're going to recreate those in a second. This is a step I already did, but I'm 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 just walking you through it here again so you can see as if you're starting from scratch. So it's formatting. And this process will be the same if you have a drive that has stuff on it. You can just format right over it. If you want, you can click show details during the process. It'll show you what's going on. So it says operation successful. Done. Now that I'm, I'm still in my disk utility, you can see there's only one partition, right? And that's just the drive itself. Remember I named it Seagate Slim Mac. 
So now what I want to do is I want to partition this because as I said, remember over here in the upper right corner there were two drives. Well I want to I want to get back to that because I want one for time machine and I want one to be able to drop and drag files separately to. And once again, if you don't do this and set the partitions up, then Apple Time Machine will take over this entire drive. The beauty of the partition here is it will only put Time Machine in the Time Machine partition and the rest of the drive is for your use. So that's what we're trying to do here. So let's do that. So I'm going to partition this right now. And it's now going to ask me how large I want this partition. And you can put other partitions in here, by the way. So I could do three partitions. I could do four just by clicking this plus or minus. So by default, it's one. It's one partition. That's why this whole graph is taken up by a whole terabyte. Um, but I want two partitions. And I know that my Mac is about right around 300, 350 gigabytes of stuff. I can choose how much I want the time machine partition to be. At a minimum, it has to be as large as what's on my computer, right? So if let's say I've got 350 gig on here, I want it at least that big. But the reality is you really want it a lot bigger than that. Why? Because you want to be able to have multiple backups and you want room for growth, right? If you put more and more stuff on your computer. So um, eventually I'm going to get a larger drive, but for right now, I'm feeling like 600 gigabytes, which is about double what my computer is, is going to be enough for Time Machine, somewhere between 600 and 700. So if I pick 700, that's going to leave me 300 gigabyte here in the other partition to just store other stuff. So um, I think that's probably enough room to grow. I could split the difference here you know, at 600, it's kind of tough to get it exactly at it at, um, there we go, 600 and 400. So um, I'm going to go ahead and hit apply here. I've already got my name in here. I want OS extended journal. Some of these other formats here, um, you can read up on these. I don't want to make this video too long, but basically um, XFAT is supposed to be for both Mac and PC. So if you want to use part of your hard drive to be able to go back and forth between Mac and PC, you would want uh, to partition it this way. But for Time Machine, which is what this is going to be, I have to use OS Extended Journal for my operating system. So this partition, I'm going to call it uh, Time Machine or Seagate Time Machine, doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to hit apply. And it's going to create that partition for me. Like I said, if you want, you can click this, show details of what it's doing. And you can see underneath the two partitions, you see the blue bar and the red bar right here. So this one is going to be for my time machine and this one over here is going to be for whatever I want it to be. Okay, so it says it's done. There we go. And then over here you can see I have two Partitions, they look like two different hard drives, don't they? But the reality is they're just two different partitions on this hard drive. So now what I can do is I can go in here. See, there's nothing on, on either one. And now when I go and set up Time Machine, I'm going to select this drive here. And it's going to give me 600 gigabytes for my backups. So this one... If you want to rename it, see where it says Show in Finder.
And by the way, see these little eject buttons? It's very important to eject before you unplug the USB. Otherwise, you can um, you can actually mess up data. I have, it's rare, but it does happen. If you want to rename this, click Get Info. And then I'll just call this um, You can call it, you know, Mac manual backup, Seagate manual backup. That way I know I can just slide files over here, right? And that this isn't anything to do with my time machine. Okay, so there's the two drives. And lo and behold, back in disk utility, it has renamed them the way I want. So here is the actual drive that's plugged in and then the two partitions. So the last thing I want to do is I'm going to go to Time Machine which is currently turned off. So if I go in here I turned it off so that it wouldn't start asking me questions about do I want to use those drives while I was while I was setting them up. But now I'm going to go in here and turn this on but before I do that I'm going to select where I want this. So the first thing I want to do is I want to, if you were using Time Machine before on another drive, you want to turn that off. I know this looks like this one down here, but it was from the last time I did it before I reformatted. So I'm going to shut this one off because it technically doesn't exist anymore. If you look, the name's slightly different. See the dash right there? I don't know if you can see that on the tiny screen. Is there a way to make this bigger? Not really. Um, Trust me that these are two different drives. This was the one that I had, you know, an hour ago before I started this. Here's a new one. So what I want to do is I want to stop using this disk. So I'm in Time Machine now. I'm going to remove this disk. Really? Are you sure? Yes. Yeah, stop using this disk. And now I'm going to use the new disk, which is actually just a new partition, which is here. I'm going to click Time Machine. So now it's only going to use 600 gigabytes on this terabyte, one terabyte drive, and Apple will not fill that drive up any more beyond that. The beauty of that is when it needs more room, it's just going to delete old backups in Time Machine here, and then it's never going to encroach upon my own personal drive storage space. Okay, so I'm, I'm basically it serves the purpose of two hard drives in one. That's what partitions do. Okay, so I've selected my time machine portion and I'm just going to hit use disk. And so now it's already wanting to start a time machine backup. See that? It's counting down 110 seconds. But for right now, I want to stop that because I want to show you that the other partition really is working. Okay, so now I'm going to let's test out this little partition that I made. I'm going to just drag something over here and see if it works. So how about this little folder here, downloads and PDFs, and it says that it's copying. So it just copied 174 gig, sorry meg, it's not showing here, but it, it that's what it, the little pop-up said. And if I click in here, then here's some different downloads and stuff that I've put in this folder. Okay? So it worked and it's the same as if I would have just clicked down in here. All right? So that is showing you that this separate partition is now working. So I know it's there and all I have to do now is just turn on the time machine and let it go. And it's going to back up. Next backup is at 1250, or I can start it right now if I want by hitting backup now. So that's it, guys. That's the easiest, fastest way I can tell you in how to uh, set up a hard drive, both for Time Machine on Mac and then keeping a separate uh, partition for your own Mac files that Time Machine will not overwrite. So I hope that helps. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. 
drop any questions and we'll see you next time. Thanks.